This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. In America, most Catholics who are paying attention to the mess of the church are aware of an organization called the Coalition for Canceled Priests. Father James Altman is the most noteworthy of the priests aided by this organization, and their aim is to assist priests who have stood up for the truth of the Catholic faith and have been punished by their bishops for doing so. Today, I have the story and statement of another such priest. This one comes from Africa, a continent that many American Catholics erroneously believe will save the church, when the church in that continent is, in reality, well, they just have as many problems as the church in America does. Father Jesus Mary Migbeto has been sidelined by his bishop and by Rome, cancelled in the same way that Father James Altman was. In fact, in some ways worse, because Rome never intervened in the Father James Altman case, to my knowledge. If I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. I'll go over in brief why this happened to Father Jesus Mary, and give you his recent statement, which is courageous and brutally honest. Father Jesus Mary Migabeto is a priest of Opus Dei, serving in the Ivory Coast, Father Jesus Mary has penned several letters publicly correcting Francis for his errors, whether, whether they are errors of confirming James Martin in the evil work that he does, or for the errors of Amoris Laetitia, or for the evils we see some of his more everyday actions, including his recent actions involving Lady Moloch. He's penned at least four such letters since late 2020, and I apologize for not bringing them to you. Here he received a letter announcing his suspension from Rome on July 1st, and he penned this letter in response. A few days after penning the letter, ComplicitClergy.com and LifeSite picked up on it, and I'm going to read it here for you in full, and taken from the priest's personal Facebook page. Here is his letter now in his own words. To the reigning pontiff, Pope Francis, dated July 1st, 2022. Dearest Father, I have just received the decree of the Congregation for Bishops, signed by you and Cardinal Mark Ouellette, in which you validate the sanctions imposed on me by the prelature of Opus Dei, because according to the decree, I lacked, quote, respect and obedience to the Supreme Pontiff, citation to Code of Canon Law number 273. In short, I am forbidden to preach, confess, and celebrate Mass in public and private. I take note of your decision, which I do not approve of because it is unjust. Moreover, I cannot in conscience renounce my public criticism of Pope Francis because, since 2016, you yourself have seriously lacked, quote, respect and obedience to God and the people of God. Indeed, before being Pope and Bishop, you are a priest, and, according to the Code of Canon Law, in, quote, leading their lives, clerics are bound in a special way to pursue holiness since, having been consecrated to God, by a new title in the reception of orders, they are dispensers of the mysteries of God in the service of his people. See Code of Canon Law number 276. Furthermore, as a bishop and pope, you are concerned by the following canons. Quote, an apostate from the faith, a heretic or a schismatic incurs a latte sententia excommunication, number 1364, or, quote, a person who in public shows or speech in published writing or in other use of the instruments of social communication utters blasphemy, gravely injures good morals, expresses insults, or excites hatred or contempt against religion or the church is to be punished with a just penalty. See Code of Canon Law 1369. O oh, Father, let me tell you that you have failed in your duty of priestly, episcopal, and papal sanctity and that you have pro propagated heresies and gravely injured good morals. And in your case, more than for a simple priest or bishop, this is even very serious. For the good example of a pope can do much good, while his bad example can do great harm. Please remember the following words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master, true judge of all men and even of Pope Francis. Quote, Much will be required of the person entrusted with much and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. See Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to fall, it would be better for him if a great millstone were tied around his neck and he were cast into the abyss of the sea. Woe to the man through whom the fall comes. See Matthew chapter 18, verses 16 to, verses 6 to 7. 
but you have scandalized the whole world several times by contradicting Christian tradition. Let me now give you the proof. One, is it morally right for a Christian, a priest or a bishop, to take the initiative to, to ask for James Martin pairing laws? God and the Catholic Church have always said no. Pope St. John Paul II and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI have reminded us that every Christian has a duty to witness to the truth and to show absolute personal opposition to such laws. Otherwise, he commits a gravely immoral act. Document of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, June 3, 2003. Fortunately, you have answered yes. Indeed, on October 21st, 2020 and September 15th, 2021, you publicly called for the adoption of James Martin Union laws. See his first letter. Quote, what we have to do is a civil, a civil pairing law. They have the right to be covered legally. I defended this. Let me point to you, Father, where your error lies. You're confusing pairing laws with protection laws. Pairing laws are related to the James Martin idea system in the culture at the moment, while protection laws are related to human discrimination. There are protection laws for children, women with children, people with disabilities, and other peoples. All these people are entitled to humane consideration and treatment, but they do not require special James Martin pairing laws. Point two, is it morally right to give the sacrament of the Eucharist to publicly Moloch supporting politicians who do not renounce the ritual? God and the Catholic Church have always answered no. See the Code of Canon Law, number 915 to 916. Unfortunately, you have answered yes. Indeed, on September 15th, 2021, you publicly agreed with the incredible support of Cardinals Ladaria, Peter Turkson, Wilton Gregory, Archbishop Paglias, and Michael Jackals, etc. on June 29th, 2022. Certainly, consciously and premeditatedly, you allowed Lady Moloch, publicly known for her support of the ritual, to receive the Holy Eucharist in the Vatican during a mass celebrated by you and knowing full well that this was publicly forbidden to her by her bishop resident. Thus, you lead the Catholic Church to disrespect in its own laws, given in the code of canon law, and you disrespect God and the Catholic people. Three, is it morally right to perform a procedure that permanently renders one unable to be fruitful and multiply with the agreement of the bone saws, but without a emergency for the well-being of the mother in question. Good and God and the Catholic Church have always said no. Pope St. John Paul II and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI have made it clear that if a group of such experts can confirm to a woman that her future chances will pose a threat to her physical existence, she cannot have the, the necessary organs removed with the excuse that her future chances will come of term. Unfortunately, you and the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith have answered yes. Indeed, on December 10th, 2018, together with Cardinal Luis Francisco Ladati Ferrer and Archbishop Giacomo Morandi, you opened the door to direct, to direct permanent prevention, the first of such measures of the Catholic Church and the first heir of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Four. Is it morally right to say that the commitment to live in continence can be proposed to Christians and is an option? God and the Catholic Church have always answered no. All Catholics with a minimum of Orthodox Christian formation, and even non-Christians who strive to live the natural moral law, know that chastity is never an option but a serious moral duty for every human being. See the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2331 to 2400. Unfortunately, you have answered yes. Indeed, on September 5th, 2016, you and the bishops of the pastoral region of Buenos Aires stated that, quote, the commitment to live in continence can be proposed. Amoris Laetitia does not ignore the difficulties of this option. The mentioned option may not, in fact, be feasible. Furthermore, on June 5th, 2017, you ordered that these three sentences be published as Magisterium Authenticum, see Acta Apostolica Sedis number 108, in 2,000 years of Catholic history, this is the first papal doctrinal moral error thus recorded in the Vatican archives. With the astonishing support of several cardinals, bishops, and priests, Perlin, Casper, Sean Bourne, Coco Palmiero, Bellini, Supic, Grish, Paglia, Fortes, Cluna, Fenoy, McElroy, Sp Spadaro, and Bourdain, etc. Our, my sanction this morning 
makes it clear to you and Bishop Fernando Ocades and Cardinal Mark Ouellet still retain a capacity for moral judgment. Why then your guilty and scandalous silences in the face of cardinals who gravely lack, quote, respect and obedience to God and the people of God? Cardinal Hollerick, who has publicly stated that the church is teaching that the James Martin Act is sin, is false. Cardinal Marx, who has said publicly that the James Martin Act is not a sin. Cardinal Matteo Marie Zuppi, who allowed Father Gabriel Diwali to bless a James Martin pair at a mass on June 11th, 2022. And Cardinal Blaise Supic, who allowed Father Joe Ro Rocco Salva to permit a James Martin pairing to give the homily at mass on June 19th, 2022 on Father's Day. What sanction for these unfaithful cardinals to the traditional teaching of a Catholic church? None. On the contrary, Positions of responsibility and public praise from Pope Francis while priests faithful to Christian tradition are sanctioned. O oh, Father, what is this unjust justice of Pope Francis and the Vatican? Are you sure that God can accept such injustice? Why today this wind of dictatorship in the Catholic Church against those who prefer to obey the absolute divine law instead of following your flagrant disobedience to this eternal divine law? With all of this, do you really think you deserve the respect of Christians when you lead them to offend God and despise his eternal law? Finally, the condemnation I received this morning's decree is unjust because it does not take into account the following words of Jesus Christ, which I say with respect, it would be good for you and Bishop Ocades and Cardinal Ouellet to meditate on calmly. Quote, why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove that splinter from your eye while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. See Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. What are my errors compared to the errors of Pope Francis? I hope that the Catholic intellectuals will have the courage to defend this truth for love of Jesus Christ and his church. What is the greatest crime of the African priest now sanctioned? To have had the audacity to contradict in public Pope Francis and his congregation for the doctrine of the faith. However, didn't Jesus, at 30 years old, do the same with the religious leaders of his time, who are 60, 70, and 80 years old? Because he was the one in the truth. Unfortunately, they handed him over to be crucified. Yet it was from this sacrifice that God derived his victory. The light of truth shone on the darkness of error and lies. Dearest Father, I take refuge in the open sight of Jesus Christ and in the tears of the Virgin Mary, the foot of the cross. Your son in Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Father Jesus Maria Musigbeto. Was anything the priest said here untrue? If anything, I think he was holding back. He could have easily included the numerous venerations of Pacamama by the officials in Rome, the creation of memorial objects, including coins and stamps for the Pacademon, the placing of a statue of Martin Luther in the Vatican and creation of stamps ded dedicated to Luther and Calvin, and any number of other overt errors that all too many Catholics just dismiss out of hand today. But the priest is not wrong. Francis has been endorsing the Pastor Jimmy Martin topic. He expressed his public support of Lady Moloch against Archbishop Cordeleone by permitting her to receive the Eucharist on the feast of Saints Peter and Paul on the same day, his letter telling us, about the beauty of the Eucharist and of the new Mass was released no less. The priest is right. He needs your prayers of support. But what do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments, please. Do you think the priest here is right? Did he go far enough? Or do you not trust Father Jesus Mary because of his affiliation with Opus Dei, an organization that some of you may not be aware has a whole host of problems of its own? Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.